This is a short revision video on the functioning of a competitive market section of the Market to Market Failure Unit of Economics AS Level with AQA. The equilibrium is the price at which demand equals supply with no tendency for change and stability. If we look at the diagram here, the equilibrium price is the price at which supply and demand cross, so P1, and the equilibrium quantity supplied demanded is Q1. This is also called the market mechanism price. Disequilibrium within the market occurs when demand does not equal supply. So there's either excess demand or excess supply. When there's excess demand, it means that there's more demand than supply at the given price. So as you can see on that quite blurry diagram there. When the price is at P1, the quantity supplied is only QS, whilst the quantity demanded is QD. And because QD is greater than QS, it means that there is excess demand. To get rid of this excess demand, prices need to rise. So prices rise, and this means that there is an increased incentive for firms to produce because they can make more profit. So firms produce more, so there's a extension of the supply curve, a contraction of the demand curve, and this leads to the new market clearing price, which is at P2. And the market clearing price is the price at which all goods supplied are demanded. Excess supply is essentially the opposite of excess demand, so it means that supply is greater than demand at a given price. So at P1, on the small diagram there, QS is greater than QD, which means that the price needs to fall for them to match, because if the price falls there will be a contraction of the supply curve, because there's less incentive for firms to produce, they can make less profit, some firms will be forced out of the market, and obviously a fall in price leads to an extension of the demand curve, because if prices are lower, people think, ooh, they might buy that, so they buy it, and they buy more. Which means that QD and QS sort of come together and they become equal at Q2, which occurs when the price is P2. So there's the market clearing price at P2. Okay, do now we're going to look at the effects of shifts in demand and supply. So say there's a shift of the demand curve, D1 goes to D2. The initial equilibrium will go turn to a disequilibrium because there's more demand than supply, so there will be a short period where there will be disequilibrium and excess demand, but then there should be an extension of supply, meaning there will be a new equilibrium at a higher price. And with supply, if there is a right shift in the supply curve, for a while there will be excess supply, but there will soon be an extension of demand because demand will rise to meet the new supply. Because a right shift of supply leads to lower prices, so demand will increase, meaning there will be a lower equilibrium at P2, so the new equilibrium price is P2. Pretty sure my voice is being extra annoying today but we're moving on to the impact of changes in demand and supply on associated markets so essentially derived demand, complementary products and joint supply. First we're going to look at derived demand which is the effect of the consumer goods market on the factor market so here the consumer good is central heating and the factor is labour. If there's an increased demand for central heating there'll be an increased demand for central heating engineers because obviously people need engineers to make the central heating work and stuff and if it breaks down. So if there's an increased demand for central heating engineers, there'll be an increase in central heating engineer wages, meaning there'll be a slight increase in central heating engineer supply because people will think, aha, I can make a lot of money if I become a central heating engineer. So you get a few more people wanting to become central heating engineers. So the increase in demand for the original good leads to an increase in supply for the good which has the derived demand, if that makes any sense. Moving on now to complementary products, which are products that are generally bought together, like shampoo and conditioner. Okay, there's an increase in demand for shampoo, which means there's an increase in demand for conditioner, because they're bought together, so that means that the increased demand for conditioner leads to an increased price of conditioner, leading to an increased supply of conditioner. Yay! So basically for any two complementary products, an increase in demand for one leads to an increase in demand for the other, which leads to an increased price of the other, which leads to an increased supply of the other. And there'll be an increased um, supply because when the demand for the second product goes up, it means for a while there'll be a disequilibrium excess demand, meaning price will rise, and because price rises, more suppliers can enter the market and they're like, woo! Joint supply, which is two goods that are supplied together. So, for example, you've got a cow. If you want to supply beef from the cow, you'll also get leather. So, the demand of and supply of beef, if the supply of beef increases, because the cows are really, um, I'm trying to think of a word other than horny, uh, they're really um, rabid that year. Lots of 
cow babies come out, lots of calves. Yeah, it, there's an increased supply of beef because there's more cows, which means there'll be an increased supply of leather because obviously cows provide leather. So that means that there'll be a fall in the price of leather because there'll be excess supply, which leads to a, essentially, a fall in the price so the demand can match. Oh, it leads to an increased demand because when the price falls, people think, ooh, I'm going to get a new leather jacket or new leather sofas or whatever else leather you can get. I actually really like leather, but I'm totally broke, so if anyone does want to buy me a leather jacket, <coughs> I wouldn't be complaining. Price ceilings and price floors. I thought I'd try to jazz up this section with a bit of a voice effect, sound effect, change the voice, but I don't think it really worked. I think it just made me sound like an idiot. Okay, first things first, a maximum price. The government might impose this on tickets or something, because it wants everyone to be able to afford tickets to a certain concert. So the government or ticket firm or authority might say the maximum price for tickets is this and the maximum price always has to be set below the equilibrium price otherwise it's no use. So when there's a maximum price, prices just simply can't meet the free market equilibrium which means that prices are unable to eliminate excess demand because if prices are lower than the, than the market equilibrium there's more demand than supply. So as you can see on the diagram we've got excess demand. This means that black markets might emerge because people might think, ooh, there's lots of demand, let's buy lots of tickets and then sell them at a higher price because we know the demand is there. And this is very bad, illegal, tut tut. I mean, you hear of these tickets going at ridiculous prices, like thousands of pounds for a Justin Bieber ticket. Why would you want to go see Justin Bieber? Especially at that price, but I, mean, I wouldn't go if you paid me to go. Time for minimum prices. Now, for minimum prices, the minimum price has to be set above the equilibrium, otherwise it's no use. The minimum price might be set on a demerit good, such as cigarettes, alcohol, because the government doesn't want people to buy them so much. It wants to keep demand low. So when there's a minimum price, supply is greater than demand. So you can see on the diagram, there's excess supply. And this actually distorts signals within the markets, because it just confuses people, because the price is higher than it should be so people supply more than they should which that's why you know there's excess supply and it's just really confusing for everybody really tragic i mean these are really important evaluations so hopefully you can put it in better words than that if you're writing an essay and you think minimum price is something you want to suggest as something the government could use always put the reasons why it might not be such a good idea and for maximum prices as well keep a nice balanced essay they always put minimum and maximum prices in multiple choice questions try to trick you and they'll have the line in the wrong place so for the minimum price they'll put the minimum price below the equilibrium which is obviously no use whatsoever has no effect on the market zero pricing is when you buy something and it's free at the point of consumption for example the nhs education i suppose you don't really buy them but you go and use them but you don't have to pay for them when you're using them so unless you go to a private school i suppose or go to private medical care but say I went to the NHS, the walk-in centre, I'd use it. I'm not paying for it directly, I'm paying for it through my taxes. So that's something that's free at the point of consumption, zero pricing. And this leads to excess demand, because people don't pay for the goods as they're using them. So demand tends to be greater than supply, hence there's a position of disequilibrium. I wouldn't worry about this too much, it doesn't really come up, so as long as you know the definition of it, and you can write a few words about it, that's all you really need. Now I've said this, there's going to be like a 25 marker on it. <laughs> we'll all fail. Woo, we've made it to the end of, I think this is the fourth video now. And I'm, my throat's gone, but you know. Still alive, celebrate your balloons. I'll see you next time. Have a lovely day.